In this clip, we're going to uh, install the new ignition system on a Kohler K161 engine. Uh, the engine's on a Troy built tiller. And uh, the, all the general information on, on using the General Motors LS2 uh, ignition coil and the PC2 crank uh, trigger, uh, slightly modified, that's all in part one. So you may want to go back and read part one if some of this doesn't uh, doesn't come right clear. The replacement ignition using the, the LS2 ignition coil and the PC2 crank sensor uh, is going to give us three levels of spark advance. Uh, the first level is no spark advance at all from 0 to about 100 RPM and that's important for starting. And then at about 100 RPM uh, we should pick in, uh, kick in a top dead center spark. So it's a very low RPM for a spark, but being at top dead center, uh, it's not going to kick back any. That'll start the engine, take the engine up to like 450, 500, and then the advanced spark will kick in, start, and, and take, take over from there. So with the, the extra level of spark advance for the starting pulse, that's going to help this engine a lot because it's a rope start engine. Okay, but looking at the engine, one of the first things I found was that the, uh, there's a couple of bosses up here above the flywheel. That looks like an ideal place to locate the, uh, the PC2 uh, sensor or trigger coil. So uh, that's where we're going to spot it. Okay, I started the uh, uh, building a bracket for the PC2 sensor with a series of paper cardboard uh, patterns here. Actually this is a third generation one and then from uh, the pattern I went as far as I could then went to iron bracket made out of a piece of angle, angle iron. So this we're going to put right here. Okay with the, uh, the trigger coil uh, position determined by the bracket there we can go ahead and mark uh, where the trigger pins need to be. So I brought the, the piston up to top dead center and so this top dead center pin made a mark here so we can locate the top dead center pin. Now I also, uh, I'll show you in a minute how I found a, the advanced pin but I brought that to this, the OEM advanced position by rotating this, the flywheel backwards and uh, we made a mark there for the location of the advanced trigger pin. Okay, to, um, to use the magneto to locate the advanced timing mark, uh, what I did here is take the center of the three-legged uh, uh, pole piece on the, on the, uh, the armature for the magneto and I just projected it out here to where the uh, I could see it with the flywheel on. So just move that mark out there like that. I did a similar thing with the magnet on the flywheel. I noted the center of the magnets, the little spot between the two poles on the magnet and then I projected it out to the outer rim of the Y flywheel. So that I could see that when the uh, flywheel was on. When I have the put the flywheel on, the the mark on the flywheel side is here. I line that up with the mark on the uh, the bearing plate here, and then voila, over here at the the uh, uh, the trigger coil, I have the advanced timing mark. A little better view of that. We have the, the uh, trigger coil here and the timing mark actually is on top of the flywheel here but it's, it's right there. So that pretty well gives me a timing that's uh, uh, consistent with the original equipment manufacturer. Uh, and an alternate way to, to come up with the uh, amount of 
to, to mark the point for the spark advance would be to measure it. Now, it's, most flywheels, it's 360 degrees around the, the circumference of the flywheel. Now, if we measure that with a, a measuring tape, and we'll find that this particular flywheel is like 25 and a quarter inches. Uh, if we take the 360 degrees divided by the 25 inches, we get 14.4 degrees per inch. So with that we can then measure the distance between the, the top dead center timing mark and the advanced timing mark and that's an inch and a half. So if we multiply the inch and a half times 14.4 we get 21.6 inches or degrees of spark advance which seems to me to be uh, should be just perfect. It's uh, it is important that the top dead center pin here and the advanced trigger pin going over there uh, will track each other very accurately. Uh, otherwise, it'll be impossible to get both of the trigger pins to line up uh, pr uh, perfectly to the uh, trigger coil. So what I did is just put the flywheel on it the table saw bed flat and found some stuff to uh, to hold the scribe and I scribed the mark in both places so that uh, I would have you know the same distance for the two trigger pins to track in. Install the trigger pins now. Uh, I drilled the holes 3 16 uh, I did drill a hole in a piece of scrap metal first to make sure that I had a nice tight fit. I would recommend that everybody do that because this is this, this you don't want this pin to be in here to loose. The, the hole has to be uh, a tight fit. So uh, I, I got the two holes drilled. We're ready to press these in. The Instructions say to to use some uh, some Loctite. The other thing is you do not go driving these things in with a hammer, or you're going to change the height of the pin. So I'm going to to try the uh, the the top dead center pin. It has to be seated all the way down. Or the pin will sit too tall. That's good for that one. Okay, this uh, with the this is the first mounting of the the actual trigger coil we're going to use uh, on. Uh, and now that we have the pins installed, we can set the air gap between the the pull piece here on the trigger pin and the tall trigger pin on the flywheel. When you, uh, when you set up the trigger coil, make sure you look at it sideways to make sure that the center of the, the trigger coil is over the center of the trigger pin. Uh, you want those to be aligned for proper magnetic effects. Okay, if we uh, can now turn our attention to the GM uh, LS2 ignition coil. Now, I, I, while I was in the shop, where it's nice and warm, I made up the red connection for this and the black connection. The black connection comes over here and just goes to the mounting bolt. But uh, then when I brought it out here, I, I added the green wire, which uh, comes from the con signal conditioning circuit uh, for the trigger. And uh, after I got these in there, they also have a a little bit of heat shrink tube on the ends to keep them from shorting together. I just epoxied it, uh, put the epoxy in outside here, but uh, a little cold out here in March, so they uh, epoxy didn't particularly like that. And looking around the engine to figure out a place where I might want to mount the ignition coil, 
I found uh, two 3 8 inch threaded holes in the side near, near the dipstick area. So that looked like the easiest place to install the, uh, the ignition coil. Okay, I uh, took an, uh, an aluminum plate and I mounted the uh, ignition coil on the aluminum plate. And it, here, I, you can see it's uh, mounted the plate then onto the side of the block. So that was uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, coming off of the ignition coil, we only have two wires. The red wire goes to the battery for power. Should be switched and maybe a fuse of three amps or something. And the green wire is the trigger coil input from the signal conditioner circuit. What we have here is a, a bracket for a Tecumseh installation and uh, on it we have the GM crank sensor, the PC2 here. Uh, but for that installation I put the electronics in the back shell of the connector. And you can see the, the bridge rectifier here. The uh, Zener diode is, is underneath that and the connections are in these little spaces that are available on the sides. So I was able to stuff all that in there and uh, include a little bit of uh, a shrink tube on the connections to make sure they don't touch. So that allows us to come off of the the bracket with with one wire, the green wire that goes over to the uh, for, for the green wire for the trigger that goes off to the ignition coil, the LS2. So if we take the ignition coil and we look at the connector for the spark plug wire, we look down in there, we, you know, I find a little bitty pin which is smaller than any spark plug wire I, connector I've ever seen before. So that little pin is about uh, 5 thirty-seconds of an inch in diameter or 0.156 inches. So we're going to have to deal with uh, that s small size pin. What I'm used to is uh, pins that are like a quarter of an inch in diameter. So that, or if there's no pin at all, they use the outer bore, and that has a diameter of about 2164. One of the things I did is I found that I have a bunch of bullet connectors from previous use on Chrysler mid-80 Chrysler control modules, and the bullet connectors just fit that uh, new size of spark plug or ignition coil connector just fine. So what I did is I took the plastic shell off of one, put it on the old spark plug wire, and crimped it and soldered it, and it'll snap right onto the ignition coil nicely, and I'll, I'll backfill it with some E6000 adhesive. Okay, uh, another perhaps, uh, another way to uh, make a good connection on this is to use a, uh, the conventional quarter inch uh, uh, spark uh, ignition fitting there and then I took a piece of the barrel from the uh, from the uh, bullet connector and just inserted it you know started to insert it connector here and when I press that on to the ignition coil that should make a good fit and I also have the rubber boot that comes with it so this wire happens to be a standard uh, Part number, you know, I think it's uh, 812CA. I got it from Rock Auto Parts. It's a 13 inch length. They come in various lengths. The wire does have 7,000 ohms resistance though, so it's a resistance type wire.